So, good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. How are you doing? Welcome back to another Monday, another Act on This TV Monday night live broadcast. Uh, for those who don't know who I am or what this is, my name is Ross. Uh, I run a website called actonthis.tv. It's literally the best acting community on the planet, the most supportive uh, acting community on the planet. And also, I mean, you know, without to tooting our own horn, um, and I mean this like on behalf of the whole community, it's without a doubt like the biggest and best knowledge platform if you want to get further in your career faster. Come and get involved. Every single week I sit down with a top agent, actor, casting director, writer, producer, and basically just chew the fat live in front of our entire membership. Um, anyone who is a member can access the Zoom calls. Um, and we basically talk about all things acting and how you can have more success in your career much faster than you are probably experiencing right now. So do come get get involved at on this dot TV. I'm um, going to give a shout out to those people who are here live then we're going to dive in caitlin's here wendy's here lizzie's here lauren from the states is here alex hewitt's in the house alex has been crushing it i've seen quite a lot of alex's work behind the scenes with casting directors this week keep going alex uh dougal's in the house anna's here how you doing uh louise jill ricky uh stacy's here howard's here sharon's here sandra from germany's in the house good uh chris is here sam lawton steve kane uh, Rich Haler from the States. We're going properly, again, properly, truly international tonight. Esther, how are you doing? Um, Claire Fox in the house. I've seen you for a while. Claire, Laura, how are you doing? Shelley, Polly, uh, Caroline, Grace, <laughs> Nicola. <laughs> I can't keep up. Jack's here. Lots of people are here. If you are listening on the replay or you're watching on the replay, come and get involved. We do this every single Monday um, at 9 p.m. UK time. Facebook.com forward slash ats on this TV. Also, Twitter.com forward slash ats on this TV. You'll find it at the top of the Twitter feed. Uh, LinkedIn, you'll find it on my own. Ross Grant, you'll find out my own LinkedIn uh, profile as well. Come and link in with me um, if I can help you. Um, you know, it's absolutely cool. Just reach out anytime. Um, got absolutely shed loads to cover tonight. I don't really know where to start. I've had a crazy day because um, I'll just share share a little <laughs> bit of adversity um, that I had to. Do you know what? You, we always talk about mindset. I've had a lot of adversity recently, haven't I? I'm just thinking about that, thinking, freaking hell. I've had quite a bit of shit happen recently, but it's all good. Life is happening for me not to me. And I had to convince myself that at half past midnight last night, Sunday night, as I changed my bed clothes, right? And I was changing my bedding and I was changing a pillowcase on my pillow. And you know, you're kind of like, I don't know if I, don't know if I can show you on camera, but I'm shoving the pillow into the pillowcase and I can't get it into the end. So I sort of turn it up and I push my, my, my fist right up like this. For those on the audio experience, you're not going to see this, but basically I do an uppercut in the air but rather than pushing the pillow to the end of the pillowcase, I just slip and I uppercut myself really hard in the jaw. And um, remember, just at the start of lockdown, I lost a crown on the bottom of my tooth, my bottom teeth. I've had on my bottom teeth, I smashed my teeth as a kid on a pavement when I fell over playing football and my teeth just got crushed. So I've got, I've got a crown and three veneers on my bottom teeth right in the middle. I knocked th uh, <laughs> three veneers off in one punch. <laughs> It's freaking a costly, costly mistake um, because ultimately, I mean, I just crapped myself. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, they're about 800 quid each. I've just punched them off. They're on my bed. I'm spitting teeth out. One of them's crumbled in my mouth. And I had to think to myself in the moment, right, don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. Don't punch yourself in the face again because that's what you want to do for having just punched yourself in the face. Um, I had to think to myself, right, what would what advice would you give to someone else in the outside of this community if they come at you with this problem? I was saying... This has happened for you, not to you. How has this happened for you? And I thought, you know what? I've had these 14 years, right? They don't owe me anything. I've gone a long time with these, with these, uh, this crown and these veneers. And I thought, you know what? This is an opportunity to just start again, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Build a new smile for the next 15 years, okay? Because you get a lot, yes, they're expensive, but you get a lot of time out of crowns and veneers. Um, and that's what I did, rang the dentist this morning. Went, listen, Phil, and he's such a legend. Massive shout out to the Mal Dental in Manchester. If you need like the best dentist in the world, and you're from Manchester, the Mal's incredible. Um, Centre of town, Albert Square. Went in, I was like, mate, these have all fell off. Can we just start again? So you won't be able to tell, right? But these teeth here, these aren't even real. You can't see them, but they're acrylic. They're, they're just temporary temporary ones that come off in two weeks, but we got moulds done today and get some new ones. So that was how I had to turn some ad uh, adversity into advantage. Some shit might happen to you today in or out of your acting career, right? It's probably not as expensive as mine, but um, that's, that's a good thing, right? <laughs> but look at it, how it's happened for you and not to you. Ask yourself, what good is there in this 
that I'm not currently seeing or I can't see right now and look for the good. The only good I could find was the fact that I could basically redesign my smile um, and hopefully it will be nice and secure for, an, for another 15 years. Um, but always do that no matter what you're facing in your life. It's freaking hard. It's really hard. That skin cancer scare I had a few weeks ago. It's been an eventful year to it. It's funny, on it? I had to think, how is this happening for me, not to me? And like, I can't tell you. Enough. Well, I have told you, haven't I? The amount of gratitude in my life for just having everyday problems. I mean, that's why I really couldn't get annoyed about this last night. Normally, Ross of two months ago would have would have probably punched himself in the face again um, and, and been really hard on himself for just making a mistake. Whereas Ross last night, to be honest, I just sort of like <laughs> lined my teeth up on the windowsill and just laughed and went, there you go. They're, they're destroyed. Excellent. This is like literally ridiculous. Um, so I find it a bit more difficult to sweat the small stuff once you've almost had something that you thought could have been life-threatening. So it's all about perspective, isn't it? So share any adversity you're facing right now in the chat. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be able to turn that into advantage for you tonight. I want to start actually, you know what, whilst I've got everybody here... I just want to give all members of Acts on this a little bit of a uh, heads up, okay? On the 1st of November, as I record this, it's the 19th of October. 1st of November, membership to Acts on this, prices are going to change, but it is not going to affect you guys. This is not going to affect anybody who is already a member, okay? But if you have been a member and you're not a member anymore, you will want to listen to what I'm going to say now because you do have, what's this, like 10, 11, 12 days right now to effectively save quite a bit of money on your membership um, if you want to get back in, okay? What I've noticed since lockdown, and that's on this has really grown since lockdown. I've been so grateful because obviously everything's online. A lot of people are at home. We've had some absolutely incredible guests on over lockdown over the last sort of like six months. We've had some of the biggest casting directors, agents, actors, writers, producers in the industry. And I've seen a lot of actors in our community. I mentioned some before. Alex, I mentioned before, you know, um, really move, I mean, like really moving their needle on the career now, right? And that's because they have committed and they've been in the membership for the entirety of lockdown. Even if they were brand new, Nicola, I know you, you were quite new. Uh, I think you're here tonight. Um, Alicia, I think you might have been, uh, you might have been pretty new as well. Um, but those people who joined at the start of the of lockdown and have been in the community six months are really making strides in their career now. Like they've just, they've probably accelerated their knowledge of the industry. I mean, seriously, like without, you know, over-exaggerating, I don't know, maybe four or five years in six months um, because of, of taking part in the weekly. We do this every single week, these weekly mastermind calls that we do. Um, and I've noticed that there is another sort of uh, percentile of people who literally join for a month because they just want to get access to like one of the guests and then they leave. And I don't think that's really going to have any effects on their career. I mean, I could probably survey them and see if they got something from that one thing that they watched or whatever. But I know from my own experience of anything in life, when I want to really move the needle on that area of my life, whether it's, you know, working out in the gym or, you know, it's, it's investing in a relationship or a business or whatever it is, you can't just spend a month doing it. It's just pointless. And I don't want to... And I don't want this to sound bad, but I don't really want to work with people who are so uncommitted to their career that they're not prepared to spend more than four weeks like in uh, our community. You know, we, we everybody here, and I don't just mean me, you all show up every single week. We all put a ton of investment into each other. And I mean that in terms of the support that you guys give each other in the Facebook group and in the private community and that's on this.tv is insane. Like, you know, the support, I don't have to jump into every every post that's made on there. You're all sharing information, sharing cast directors, email addresses, emails you send in, sharing your results, helping people out, viewing each other's show reels, giving feedback, etc. So you're all putting a, a shit ton of effort into each other as well. And that's what I want to cultivate more of. So what I'm going to do is... I don't know if this is a good business decision, but moving forward, I'm going to try and deter new members from signing up for a monthly membership, as in paying by the month. Now, you can, you guys, and a lot of you do pay by the month now, you're going to get it a lot cheaper, and you already get it a lot cheaper. Um, your prices aren't going to change than, than the price that new people are going to pay in two weeks' time. I'm going to share a pricing table with you now, and I'm just going to explain how this is going to go, because... Um, I don't want it to be a shock for everybody. I want to be completely transparent about why I'm doing it. It's not a money spinner. Um, I'm actually trying to deter people from from spending more money, and I'm trying to get them more value. And I'll show you how that works. So, this is this isn't live yet, 
Currently, membership to Acts on This is 24 quid a month if you want to join the site or 224 quid a year, right? So at 24 quid a month, it works out at six pound a week. It's an absolute no-brainer right now. Um, at 224 pound a year, works out at four pound 30 a week. So if you're currently to buy a yearly membership, um, it would be works out four pound 30 a week, okay? Um, if you buy currently a, a monthly membership, it's £24 a month, so it's £6 a week. But these on the screen right now are going to be the new prices, right? And I appreciate the monthly membership is almost doubling in price. And like I say, that is to basically deter people <laughs> from <laughs> from just buying a month and quitting, right? I don't want that. Um, however, if people commit to six months, the price drastically reduces. The price goes down from 11 75 a week to £7.57 a week or... And this is what I want people to do. If people actually freaking commit to their careers and 52 weeks of coaching with with the biggest names in the industry every single week, that's what I'm providing people. Uh, membership goes down to £4.75 a week. It's, t- it's um, 247 quid for a year. And when people are spending 50 grand on drama school, you know, £15,000 a year on drama school, £247 to get access to a way, way, way better education of the business of the business than you will get at any drama school is a complete no-brainer. So these are going to be the new prices from the 1st of November. People are welcome to jump in for a month if they want, but they're going to pay you know, the price for doing that. They're going to pay £11.75 a week for doing that, which is still a really decent price when you consider most Zoom webinars people are doing with casting directors, etc., 15, 20 quid. It's still cheaper than anybody else. But the more you commit to act on this, the more it commits to you in terms of the discount you get. So you literally save 56% on your membership if you sign up for a year. Now, at the moment, you've got a golden window if you don't want to be, you know, looking at these these commitments in the future, Okay. On actsonthis.tv, if I share the main website with you now, you can still get these prices, which are what most of you guys are going to be on already. 24 quid a month, right? So that's literally half price if you do just want to pay it by the month because you don't want to commit. Um, or 224 quid for the year, which works out at a bar, the cheapest it'll ever be. Basically £4.30 a week. So even, do you know what? And even if you guys who, who are paying 24 quid a month right now, if you want to, before the price goes up to 247 quid for the year, if you want to jump in on this and get it for 224 a year because you're like, I've had enough of my monthly, I know I want to commit to the to the for the next year and never pay more than this again, and um, you'd end up saving, what would you save? One pound seventy a week. You're gonna save eighty odd quid a year. If you do want to if you're currently paying monthly 24 quid and you want to go yearly, just email Ross at actonthis.tv and I'll send you a special link. So you can get off monthly and you can save. It's going to be nearly, what's well, it going to be? Nearly 90 quid, isn't it? Let me just get my calculator out. And I didn't realize that, but actually, yeah, it adds up, doesn't it? £1.70 a week times 52. £88.40. If you're currently paying 24 quid a month and you want to save £88.40 because you want to commit to a year, just email me, ross at this.tv. So that's what I want to just get out of the way, first of all. So it's not a shock to people. Like I say, it will not affect anybody who's currently paying whatever you're paying. Once you buy your membership, you lock that membership in for life as long as you keep it active, basically. So even if you got in, do you know what? The boys and girls who got in in 2010, freaking hell, you're on a bargain. They're paying very, very little, but you will never pay more than that. You've been in the community 10 years. It's a reward for you. Um, you'll never pay more than that as long as you keep your membership active moving forward, right? You'll never pay any more. And that goes for anybody who signs up. As long as you keep the, the payments active and you keep your membership active, you will never pay any more again you'll be immune to any any price increases so that's rule number one for tonight <laughs> topic number one <laughs> rule number one <laughs> is basically commit to uh ads on this and it'll commit back to you so does that make sense if anybody's got any uh any questions about that let me know um but everyone in the chat has been super kind going it's what a great community is and, and how much they've learned since uh since joining so if you are on the fence um, now is the time to um, to get off the fence, basically. Come and commit. Um, and like I say, if you commit to six months or, or a year, or if you commit to a year now, you get it cheaper than you'll ever, ever, ever get it again. Um, and like I say, if you want to upgrade, give me a shout. Now, next thing I want to cover um, is we're going to talk a little bit about um, show reels for a bit because we had Chris Stone on last week. Members of AtsOnThis.tv got a nearly three-hour mastermind session with Chris Stone. In my opinion, the greatest show reel producer in the UK, um, he just creates, you know, awesome stuff. Um, 
there's other serial producers in the UK that create awesome stuff, but I think Chris just has the edge in terms of production quality. Um, and he's just incredibly knowledgeable. He's a filmmaker, really, at the heart of it. Um, I think he's probably a bit too good to be doing showreels these days, but he does. Uh, we had him on talking all about showreels, and we actually did something called showreel surgery last week where we played out members of the community showreels privately in our group our group mastermind session. Chris gave feedback, gave loads of tips. Um, I know loads of you guys went away, started editing your, uh, you know, your reels um, in accordance to the tips and the tactics and the strategies we gave out there. And I've seen massive improvements already. Uh, but I'm going to go through. I've just pulled out four little clips just to remind you guys whether you were there or not. Um, just some stuff that... Um, that uh you know we um we covered on the on the on the night that i think is just universal that should be in every singles every 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 actor's uh every single actor if i can speak tonight i've got streamer brain because i've had an injection at the dentist and on my mouth um every single person's showreel you know there's some universal sort of uh, rules that i think everyone should abide by so i'm going to play a bit of that out um alicia's got a question about membership will there be an option to set up direct debit for 6 12 months no cancel anytime yeah you can cancel i mean you can cancel anything anytime you want when it comes to your membership, you pay monthly, you can cancel, you're only locking in for a month. If you pay for six months, you're only locking in for six months. If you pay yearly, you're only locking in for a year. Um, there's there's no minimum term bar the term you initially sign up for. Um, and you can cancel from the members area on your own. I hate things that you sign up to that you're, it's a freaking nightmare to get out of. You know, when people you sign up to something, it's like, if you want to cancel, you have to ring this number between 3 and 4 p.m. on a Tuesday. It's like, no, I don't want to speak to anybody. I just want to cancel. Um, you can take care of all that in the members area. I don't, um, you know, I don't have to get involved with that. That's that's entirely like, you are free to do whatever you like when you're a member of on this. You know, come and go as you, uh, as you please. Um, now, the first showreel tip Chris gave out um, is ultimately, you know what, it's, and it's the same old, same old, and a big struggle for a lot of actors. It's knowing your casting type. Who um, who uh, is still struggling with that in terms of like really understanding where you fit in the industry? Because this is where most people go wrong. Initially, they don't understand the casting type, and then they make a showreel that is completely incongruent with what they are. They make a showreel about who they think they are, or they let someone else give them a script, or let someone else cast them in something. Um, they don't have that self-awareness that you really need in order to actually, you know, truly know yourself, honestly, where you fit in the industry, because then it makes targeting casting directors for the roles that you fit like a glove so much easier than just carpet bombing everybody and all the shows that you're just never going to really, you know, be in because like they're just not really your, you know, kind of thing where you, you know, exactly where you fit. So this is the um, the first clip about knowing your casting type. I was asking Chris about, you know kind of what's new in the world of showreels. And this is something that just keeps cropping up for people um, time and time again. We'll ask, I will answer some questions when I come back from this. It's only two minutes long. And I can see some more questions about membership. I will, I will cover those as well. Actors will come to you and they'll want one thing. They'll be like, right, okay, I, you know, I want to get a, sh a, sh a showreel scene shot as this. How many times are they completely unaware that that character is just not either what they're going to play right now or just doesn't suit them at all? Most of the time, we'll have a conversation and you know, when they're booked in with me, I spend about an hour or so on the phone really getting to know that person and advise them going, you actually, you wanna play police, but actually this isn't right for you. This is completely the wrong, you would never get cast, but as the criminal or the victim, which would still you know, get you roles, they play roles in, in police dramas, that would be perfect for you. Just, you know, otherwise a square peg round hole. It's completely the wrong thing. Sometimes it's really hard. And I get it. It's really hard to see what you're viewed as from the outside. So this is why, I t you know, nine times out of 10, people will listen to me and take the advice on board and we'll alter it and fix it so it works for them. I just talked a lot of people through a program where we did something called yeah. Day Player Diagnosis. Yes. Where it's like, let's actually really diagnose which of these 30 Day Player roles like fit you like a glove. And there might be three or four of those, okay? Now, obviously, in, in you know TV serial drama in particular, the the sort of like the highest frequency of day player roles are probably things like policemen, police women. So I yep. understand why actors are drawn to them because they're like, actually, you know what, I've got loads of chances of being cast as this. However, if you are not, you know, you've really got to be self-aware. If you are not naturally authoritarian, if you don't have, you know, kind of that, you know, authority kind of look and, you know, just the way that you are, um, it's not going to work for you. Just because you put a uniform on, 
it doesn't and say some words it does not mean that you know that is actually yep. the right day player role for you if you are vulnerable and you're not authoritarian then actually why don't we start looking at like the nurses the carers that are in equally high frequency but are really going to fit you like a glove <laughs> Acts on this dot TV. Um, if you want to watch the the full, I think it was nearly three hours with uh, with Chris. But yeah, so hopefully you get the point there, right? I know there's a lot of people who are looking for the first few roles in TV, um, and a lot of those roles are going to be the day player roles. And I know the highest frequency of day player roles are generally those uniformed roles, um, you know, like policeman, policewoman, etc. Um, and I've made a career out of that, more or less, to be honest with you, so far. But you can't don't be tempted to just go out and shoot a scene as a policewoman or a policeman if it really is not you in terms of don't go okay there's loads of these so I'll go and do that um it's it's just as bad as shooting you know I don't know something that's massively over dramatic that isn't a day player role you know when you're looking to just get your first couple of lines on TV um if you are not authoritarian naturally if you're not you know that's just not the role that you've ended up playing um in life um, and you're more vulnerable or caring or whatever it is, look at the day player roles that are vulnerable and caring, like the social workers, you know, the carers. They're still uh, in high frequency, um, but you've really got to align what you're getting shot. I do see some people who are um, just shooting stuff or kind of using using footage from short films they've been in because, and I get it, because they've been casting them and, you know, they're generally just, you know, like student films or whatever they can just get into when they're first starting out and they're using those films and stuff as showreel material, but it's not it's not congruent with actually who they are. So that was kind of thing number one before you do anything with your showreel um, to think about without a doubt before moving on to another clip, um, which is, oh God, equally, an, it's another massive, massive hole I'm seeing actors fall down um, in, and we'll discuss it properly in a second. I'll just cover a couple of questions that came in whilst that video is playing. So Alicia, those those six-month commitments and the 12-month commitments to the membership are paid up front. They're paid in full up front. It's a commitment um, as opposed to paying it off monthly. You can go monthly. If you're already on monthly, you can stay on monthly. Um, if you um, want to go six six monthly or yearly, um, they're upfront payments. So that's just done. I like it in, you know, in terms of when I'm committing to something, sometimes I just like to get it out of the way. Just go, you know what, sod it. I'm just going to pay it all now. Gym memberships, I do this. I pay my gym membership at once, all up front. I get a saving for doing that, as you guys will do on Acts on This. Um, and it means I don't have that money coming out of my account every month. It's just like, right, and I've committed to it then. So I'm like, right, I better bloody go to the gym. That's what I want people to look at Acts on This as. <laughs> I pay for it. I need to freaking use it. Um, because it is the people who are using it I'm seeing make the, the most progress really, really quickly, as opposed to just dabbling with it. Um, and I feel the, uh, yeah, I feel the prices are really, really fair as well. There's, you know, if, if actors aren't prepared to what commit, what four pound, what did it work out? Four pound seventy five a week. I just can't really take you seriously. So um, I think it's a decent deal, but it may, it's going to hopefully make people uh, make people use it. Um, so that was um, tip number one on show reels. Just make sure you're shooting something that's aligned to you. This second thing is all about who you are shooting with, right? I'm going to play it. I'll talk about it in a minute. I was going to talk about it and then play it, but have a watch. I'm sure you'll get it. What's going well in the world of showreels and, you know, what's maybe not going so well. Make sure whoever you work with is strong because the real secret of this of scenes is it's the other person that's selling your performance. Yeah. You might think, oh, aren't I selling my own performance? Yes, you are, but it makes a huge difference. Right, so say, for example, I write you as intimidating and you brought somebody who isn't particularly strong. Yep and they can't play scared, instantly you're less intimidating. Yes. If, yes. Does that make sense? But if I'm writing you as intimidating, and you're coming with somebody who's very strong, who can play absolutely terrified, that makes you terrifying. Even if, so I'm, not, even if I'm not as terrifying, they're going to amplify yeah. how terrifying I am because they're... Because it's sold on their, their reaction. It's sometimes their reaction to your action that completely sells you. Sometimes people think or they'll make themselves look good by coming with somebody who isn't as experienced to make them bring them... Actually, what you need to do is come with the absolute very best actor you can get hold of to you know, elevate your performance. And the only caveat to that is, obviously, don't come with somebody who you would end up being in the same room as. Does that make yeah. sense? So the if same, you're a... The same audition room, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, same yeah. audition, yeah. So 
if you know you wouldn't do a scene with another uh, white guy at the same sort of age with the same casting type because you're literally cancelling each other out and creating competition for yourself. You'd want to cause the least amount of confusion possible. So that would be the thing at the moment is just take your time with finding the partner. Don't just jump into bed with the first person that says, yes, I made a tweet about that the other day. It's literally just just do a bit of research. Actually even watch the show reel of the other person or get to know them. Actually see if they can act beforehand. So really do take your time to yeah. um, you know, figure out who your partner is. It's, it's like, it's so important. So yeah, show real partners in terms of who you are casting in your scene, like really take that seriously. Um, I know a lot of actors split show real scenes um, because they're quite costly. I get it. You know, people like Chris are, are you know, relatively expensive to work with, um, but it's because of the quality of the stuff that they produce and a lot of people want to split the show real scene. So they only pay half and the person pay half and that's a great way to do it. Um, but don't just accept like the first person who goes, yeah, I'll do it. I, I want to split a scene. Um, if you don't know they're any good, okay? Because if you turn up, um, you really are, you're only really as good as the person you're playing opposite. And a lot of people, um, like Chris said there, they almost think if they bring someone who's not as good, they'll shine over the other person. And that's not what's going to happen. The, the audience is just going to be put off by the poor performance of the other person. That they're not even watching what you're doing. The, the better the actor you can bring with you, the more you're going to up your game, the the more you're both going to make each other shine. And like you said, if you've got to, you know, be terrifying and the actor you bring can play terrified really well, you're going to be even more terrifying on screen. If you're playing terrifying and that person doesn't look scared whatsoever and can't act scared, you're not going to look very terrifying. So um, it all comes down to how good the person you're playing opposite is. And that's what's really lovely when you get a few TV jobs and you're opposite, even if it's only a small job, but you're opposite someone who's really freaking good, someone who's you know very well known in the industry or whatever. You really, you feel the pressure, but you really, really bring it. It ups your game. You raise your bar, you know, to try and reach theirs um, because that's, you know, that's, that's what you should be doing. That's what you should be aiming for. So um, bring the best people you possibly can to um your show real scene if you are going to get one shot from scratch i remember being this is, might have happened give me a give me a comment if this has happened to you if you've ever been t paired up with someone in an audition um and they've been shit it's i bet it's ruined your performance as well because i know it has done for me where i've been really frustrated i've gone oh my god like I've, you know been through the first round of auditions you think you've done a really good job when you go in and then you get paired up with someone else and then they do like a second round where you're getting paired up and that person you paired up with doesn't know their lines, just is not very convincing and it makes you sort of come out of it a bit. Maybe you're not as, you know, you just can't, the scene doesn't flow as well as it would do if the person was on their lines and on their cues. Um, I've definitely felt that where I've gone, for fuck's sake, you've just like wrecked my audition because you didn't prepare. Um, hopefully casting directors can kind of see through that and they'll pay you up with someone who has um, but I know definitely when it's commercial casting is definitely where my chance has been blown because of somebody else uh, or someone else in the group. If you had a group casting where you go in in like threes or fours and you always get the dickhead, the one I have to be the person who's the loudest and talk the most and oh, they just hog it all. You know, if you've got to do an improvisation, you must have acted opposite somebody like that um, who just will not share the the like we'll just not share the space with anybody we'll not have like let anybody speak and they shut everyone down as well so the, the whole thing that i i think about improvisation anyway is when somebody presents something to you in, in an improvisation you kind of roll with it you accept it if they go oh here's a cup of tea you don't go what tea <laughs> you just shut them down straight away take it oh thank you very much i mean you know it's a bit bit sort of uh pan of mind that isn't it a bit peter pan but um yeah, kind of like, you know, you're supposed to facilitate each other's performance ultimately, not try and outshine each other or make one look bad compared to the other. Um, same applies to your showreel scenes, but I bet everybody's been in one of those auditions, I'm sure. <laughs> Lauren says, oh God, yes. And Raya says, yes, totally block you. They shouldn't get cast on principle. <laughs> I was once paired up with a guy, says Grace, for a phone company advert. It was improv comedy. He actually stopped me and said, what on earth are you doing? The worst thing you could do to another actor. <laughs> I love it. I'm glad it's not just me then. We've all ex all experienced that then. 
It's so funny, isn't it? But it does happen. I've definitely had it. Or I've just gone, brilliant. I really had a shot at getting that and you've completely screwed it up for me. Thanks ever so much. Um, but like I say, hopefully, cast, you'd hope cast directors can kind of see through that as well. That needy look at me, kind of jazz hands type thing. Oh, I don't like it. So, uh, uh. Um, oh my God, I did an improv, said Nicola. Ended up being a turtle. <laughs> what? Ended up being a turtle? Don't ask. And the bloody actors sat on me and wouldn't get off for the remainder of the improv. I've never, do you know what, for a, for a well-known energy drink, I had to run around the room as a monkey once uh, for a commercial, screaming the name of the energy drink at the top of my voice. It was the most ridiculous. I think the cast director probably just made it up. Probably wasn't even, a, even an audition. <laughs> so, right, come in. There you go. This is what you've got to do. I remember I had to do Nintendo Wii once. When I, remember, we used to play tennis on Nintendo Wii. Um, and we had to pretend with a, with a TV remote, because they didn't have a Wii remote, um, for a Nintendo advert. And you have to go, as if you were like hitting the tennis ball and all you hear outside the reception is people walking in and going ah ah <laughs> what are they making people do ridiculous i didn't get that one either um that was a uh, an interesting uh casting i had one a few years ago a guy just answered no to every lead i offered said rich i think it's a thing in it i'm so glad it's not just me dougal thanks for being here mate he's at work he says he's got to go but cheers man uh, the replay will be uh, online straight away uh, after this. So that was was tip number two from Stonio. Um, I've got a couple of others that I want to play on show reels before uh, we have a chat. Oh, the next one. This is this is really important as well because this can do eighty percent of the work. I mean it honestly. I, I, I'm a big believer in the eighty twenty rule. What is you know the twenty percent? What tw- is the twenty percent of the things that you do that make eighty percent of the difference? This next thing is the 20% of the showreel that I think can make 80% of your performance. Not of the entire showreel, but of your performance. Check it out. The thing that I tell them going, right, if you're doing police, you need to either spend the time and money getting the proper uniform because that can destroy a scene. You might be the best actor in the world, but if your outfit, you know, especially on period scenes, costume, if your costume, everything, mate, yeah. it destroys it, completely destroys it. And I mean, I can, you know, there's been some horror stories where people have turned up in fancy dress stuff and it like completely <laughs> ruins the entire thing. So either do plain clothes policemen, but you know, wear blues and stuff. So it almost signifies that you're police or spend the time getting the proper uniform. And that is quite hard to get. So when people have inquired and I've said, look, if you want to do uniform police, you have to get it. It does put a lot of people off because it is, you know, tricky to get the... You can, you the, can, you can definitely, though. I don't think it costs that much. It's roughly, I think, roughly about 100 quid a day, which I get it is, you know, is is, is an investment. But it really, like you say, it, you know, if you're going to get a 25 quid copper fancy dress off Amazon, then the 300 quid you're spending on a scene, 400 quid you're spending on a scene, whatever it is, is destroyed. Yeah, yeah, let's either, um, you know, well, if, you, if, if you are doing police, make sure it fits you like a glove, get the real deal. Um, but equally, you can get a costume that's really cheap. If you're doing like a doctor or a nurse, you know, um, I was I was showing some examples of, of like stethoscopes, mate, that are the real deal yeah. on Amazon, three ninety nine. put a shirt on and a tie. I've done this in Emmerdale, shirt yeah. on tie, stethoscope around the neck, boom, instantly does the trick hold the clipboard done doctor costumes what five quid so um, you still need to be the casting type to play a doctor yeah (laughs) Yeah. again that's the key thing you can have all these props but if you're not the right casting type for it it's a complete waste of time so it's about just just being specific and going and being honest and going is this right Once again, ads on this TV. If you want to listen to the or watch the full the full webinar with Chris, plus another four hundred hours of like literally the best acting career advice you'll find on the planet. Um, costume, yeah, costume is freaking everything. It really can do so much of the performance for you. It can say so much about your character without you having to. Um, you know, I know a lot of people recently have been shooting stuff where they've been playing nurses and stuff. A nurse's uniform, some scrubs. Just convey all of that without you having to give any expositional bullshit dialogue about being a nurse or whatever. Um, it, and it also just you know conveys loads of stuff about you as a person. This person must be kind, caring, compassionate, intelligent. Um, you know, dedicated to their job, likes people. All of these really positive traits that a casting director will be looking for in a person. Um, they project onto you purely because they're seeing the scrubs. You know, because they're seeing the uniform. Um, equally, a police uniform conveys instantly authority you know, stature, um, all of that stuff, power, 
uh, without you having to do anything. So like it will it will really do honestly 80% of your performance. If you can put the other 20% on and you're decent uh, when you're after those, you know, two, three, four, five line jobs in serial drama when you're first starting out, bang. Like honestly, it's it, it can just get you a job. <laughs> like literally. So make sure you are invested in costume. Um, some people were saying, isn't it, isn't it an offense to, to impersonate a police officer? Yes, definitely is. So what you do when you're filming as a police officer, um, you ring the local police. You say, hey, I'm going to be in this park from 10.30 till 11 o'clock. Um, I am going to be wearing a police uniform in between takes. I'm going to put a coat on to cover it up. Just wanted to let you know in case anybody reported it. The same, if, and this is really, really important if you are using any firearms for a scene and you're in public, you need to phone the police and you get to tell them your exact location, your name, your phone number, where you are, what you're doing there um, and for how long. Um, I know Chris Stone, I've been there when we've been using guns um, and that's what he's done. And the police are all right with it. They're okay, you know, um, as long as they're fully aware that there's a situation happening there. If someone rings up and goes, oh my God, there's three people in the park with an AK-47. I still wouldn't really recommend it being in a park. We've done it where we've been in much more enclosed areas, old buildings, warehouses, etc. But we've still told them just in case someone looks through the window and goes, you know, I was tied up in a short film we were doing, <laughs> nothing dodgy. <laughs> um, and there was literally henchmen stood on the side with AK-47s. Um, so we still, no one could really see, um, cause we're in a building, but we still made sure we told the police because you don't want them phoning up and going, Hey, someone's being held hostage with AK 47s in this building <laughs> and you don't want any of that going off. So make sure you tell people, but yeah, you can, you can wear a police uniform. It's obviously not going to be a full proper, you know, it will be a, a very convincing costume, but they're still not real, real police uniforms. Um, and you make sure you tell them, you tell them you hire it, you have to hire it from, a, an official place, um, they will take the showreel producer's details as well or the production company's details. You know, it's all logged. Everything's kind of, you know, above board and official. Um, so, yeah, just be careful. Like I say, particularly if you're using weapons, you do not want the SWAT team smashing <laughs> smashing in the building and uh, <laughs> coming to save you when you don't need to be saved. So that was costume. Last, uh, The last thing I'm going to play you from that webinar, like I say, it's three hours. You need to go and watch it all because we play in that webinar um, we actually play eight members of Acts on This. We play their show reels out. I'm going to show you uh, where you'll find that. Oh, members, let me just share this with you for a second. So non-members, you can go and watch a preview. If you go into Acts on This TV, click previews. You'll see it here, a little cartoon of uh, Chris Stone. Um, but you'll see we actually, if I just skip through this a little bit, you'll uh, you'll see we play somewhere. Uh, yeah, there you go. We actually start playing people's show reels out. Kiefer is here, I think. Uh, that's Kiefer's showreel. He's in Doctors there. Um, really good scene, mate. Really, really good. But we actually play these these showreels out. Chris critiques them, gives advice on where you know where people can improve them. We played eight out on the evening. We're going to do this regularly as well, probably once a quarter. So the next one we're going to do will be between Christmas and New Year. Um, but uh, members, by the way, you, I've put a couple of new features um, or I'm trialing some stuff out. If you click on members area now, you'll notice your members area looks a little bit different. The uh, memberships and your products are all laid out slightly differently now. But you'll see these two tabs here, these two menu items. One says member directory and one says announcements. Member directory, if you click on it, I think I'm going to be the only one in there at the moment. Uh, what you, when you click on member directory, you'll see a message here saying, hey, you probably won't see anybody right now. And that's because you need to agree to share your details in the members directory and then you can view other members as well. What I want to try and do is create a directory of every single member so that it makes it really easy for you guys to get in touch with each other. You know when you want like a reader for your self-tape or you want to follow each other on social media. Um, it's very basic at the moment. It will just basically you can search for people via their name or their location, um, but it will have your, your name, your photograph, your social media details here. Um, when you go into that tab, just click on the message that's there. It'll take you into your profile and just fill your profile in and then just tick a box underneath that says, yes, I agree to share my stuff. Hit save and then you'll appear in this member directory as well. The other thing is this announcements tab. And this is just when I send email announcements out generally with Zoom links each week to go, hey, look, we're going to be, this was Friday's this is an announcement I made on Friday. Today at 4 p.m. we did our rapid fire Friday. We do that for members, which is a Zoom um, call where we spend 90 minutes just doing any Q&A that you guys want, a private Q&A just for members. Um, there's a, an announcement we did from when we were going live uh, with Chris Stone, 60 minutes till we go live. So you'll find announcements in here. 
Um, if you want to like, you know, just check on those when you log into the site, just to make sure you've not missed anything. That's, you know, just an easy place for you to see what's going on. Um, but yeah, let's fill the, uh, the members directory up with people. Um, oh, Alicia's already done it. Boom. So now Alicia is in the <laughs> members area in the members directory. So, um, so yeah, I just, it's very basic at the minute. I'm just adding stuff when I'm not punching myself in the face and knocking my teeth out like I did last night. Um, so let's try and add that. We should have, you know, there's, there's what is it like eight, 900 people in the community. Hopefully, you know, that'll fill up quite quickly. Um, so, uh, so that's that. Um, yeah, so you can go in um, get the preview if you if you're not a member, get the preview of Chris Stone's um, show real surgery, and this is the last little bit I want to play from it, uh, which is really just sort of eight things that should be in everybody's reel. And I got Chris to reel it off and patch edited it in like two minutes. Um, just think, see if you can tick these off. Are these things that you've done in your reel, or are the things you need to research a bit more? Um, and if you do need to research them, go get a membership to act on this and, and listen to the full webinar with Chris. Let's just recap for everybody so they can write some notes now on the things that are absolutely definitive that we've spoken about that we think should be in, in, in people's reels. Headshots. Re and a good headshot, a decent headshot and your name. That's all you need. Centralised. So when it cuts down into uh, social media, it's still in the middle. You just nice start. Boom. Leave it on for two, three seconds, then go into it. Then you want your scene that is closest to you up first in your neutral, normal accent and something that will you know, grab their attention. And then it's just a matter of taking them through a little journey of you, but not repeating any information that is done. On technicalities, you don't want to create any uh, dissolves because that makes it actually feel longer. And you don't want to make it more than, well, you don't want to make it more than three minutes. You want to get it to 2 minutes 59, but ideally you want to get it to 2 minutes 20, 2 minutes 19, so you can fit it on social media. You want to show a nice contrast of different scenes, but it's still your brand. So by the end of it, that we know exactly who you are. End with something strong, where everybody's all on about the beginning, but the end is just as vital. If you've done a really good job and everybody's watched right to the end, if you just pointless, or it, just, or it just or it just ends on nothing. Or it yeah. just ends. Or like I've seen showreels where people end in mid <laughs> mid sentence like that, and you're like, "Sorry, what? Is there a fault with this?" You probably you want to make it feel like it's this is it. This is a conclusive ending. Everyone's like, "Put all the best stuff at the beginning." It's like, no, no, no. You need something good for the end because if you do the, the job right, that's the last thing they're gonna see of you, and they will only remember that. They won't actually remember the beginning. End with a headshot. End with the information. Whether it be spotlights, emails, Twitter, whatever you need to do, you've got to think of it like a movie trailer. It's uh, you know, it's got to sell the product. You've got you know, when you see a movie trailer, you go, oh, I want to see that. That's the thing. That's the same with the show reel. You want to see it. You want to bring them in. There you go. Eight tips for show real success in two minutes. That thing you're talking about, the end of your reel, that was something that's, that a lot of people tripped up on on the evening. A lot of people's reels just ended. They faded to black. There was no alternative photograph at the end that was the difference of the picture that the, the headshot at the start. There was no kind of agent details or whatever it would be for you, uh, you know, so that people can get in touch with you. And yeah, and, and one of the big things is they faded their stuff out that end frame with your details on, don't fade that out because that's, that should be the last thing that a casting director sees or an agent sees and that needs to stay on the screen so that they can get in touch with you. They're not having to rewind five seconds every time they want to like, oh, pause it quick before the before the writing goes. Um, but that was just, just a little brief recap on so many things we covered um, on the evening. Like I say, we're going to be doing the showreel surgery with Chris probably once a quarter um, and we're going to play a different eight showreels out every single time. Um, so it's just a way for, um, you know, for people to sort of see what other people are doing. And that's important in a way. I don't mean it in like a, I'm spying on the competition kind of way, but I guess it is, it is a bit like that in terms of seeing what your peers are putting out. Do, do you measure up? And that's not a, a, a critical thing or like, oh no, I'm not as good as everyone else. Um, it's just, it's just making sure that you actually, you know, you have that barometer of where you are right now, what you might need to focus on, what you might need to put, put a bit more time into. Um, everyone's on their own clock, takes everybody a little bit, you know, a little bit longer, a little bit less time, whatever, you know, everyone's different, but, um, make sure that you are, uh, aware, yeah, of like where ultimately where you stand within the competition. That's not a bad thing to know. 
um, so you know exactly you know what you should be focusing on in your career right now. Uh, so that's on this .tv. If you want to, like I say, get your membership, you want to get access to that and loads and loads and loads of other webinars that we've done as well, plus weekly invites to these weekly webinars that we do every single week with the biggest cast directors, agents, actors, writers, producers in the industry, full stop, which takes me on to this Thursday, members. Boom. Who's a, who's a fan of normal people? Anybody a big fan of normal people? I'm sure I'm sure I'm gonna get a shitload of comments now. One of the best, one of the best shows I've seen. It, it's been absolutely huge during lockdown. Uh, BBC and Hulu um, drama Normal People um, stars there Daisy Edgar Jones, Paul Meskell, um, and it's just an incredible love story, basically, um, full of love and heartbreak, and it's all very modern, and you know, it's ultimately just. It's, I, just go and watch it. Basically, just go and watch it. Um, but we have got the Emmy-nominated casting director, Louise Keeley, who casts Normal People um, on our Closed Door Mastermind session this coming Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. We're going to be talking to her all about her casting process, her office. Um, Louise is probably is probably the biggest casting director in Ireland for those people who are in Ireland. Bobby, I know you are. Um, obviously, casts you know, stuff on the mainland as well. Um, she's just one thing coming out this year. What is it? The Drowning, I think, Louise did stars Jill Halfpenny and oh who does it st- um Jonas Armstrong yes my memory serves me right yeah Jonas Armstrong um Kiefer says F yeah um he's a uh, he's a big fan Kiefer this is right up your street mate um definitely but yeah Louise is going to be joining us this Thursday night if you want to get involved at on this dot tv um forward slash live if i go over there now let's just see who's joined in the members directory see who else is as fast as alicia oh look at you guys boom we've got loads of people who are in there already it's good in it like i say super basic right now um this is just me trying stuff out um but i just thought this is a nice way for people to you know sort of find each other um it'll be in alphabetical order by default first name alphabetical order you could search for people though let's test it out let's search for amanda see what happens if I can spell, there you go. Um, let's do a do a search. See if this works because it might not because I um, I've not tested it yet because <laughs> I didn't have anybody. Maybe I've not activated it in the back end. Amanda. Oh, why is that not having it? Search by name, Amanda. Don't have to go anywhere, do I? There's no where's there's no submit button. Right, I might have to just look at the code for this, <laughs> but it will work. <laughs> it will work when I um when I figure that out. Don't you worry about that. Location? Well, not gonna, there's no search button, is there? I've just put the search fields in and I've not actually put the search button. Bear with me though, right? It's work in progress, guys. On the um on the plus side, for those people who are new to the community, go to adsonlist.tv forward slash live. And you will see we've got the, the broadcast calendar here. So this week's Louise Keeley. Next week as well, um, we've got... Come on, internet. Maybe it's because my internet's just really slow. Maybe that was why that search wasn't working. I'll try that out in a minute. Uh, we've got Amy Rain Jackson from Amy Hubbard's office um, the week after as well, the following Tuesday. The following Thursday after that. I don't want to spoil it for you, but uh, if there's Doctor Who fans in the house, you're going to be freaking made up. Um, we've just got some really, really brilliant people uh, coming on uh, between now and Christmas. Every single week is uh, is jam-packed out. So that's on this.tv forward slash live, full details of that. Do come and get involved, and I'll fix the members directory if it's not working. Someone test it out for me now. Maybe the, maybe I've not put the, <laughs> the submit button in there. I will do, though. Don't you worry about that. Um, lots of fans of normal people uh, in the house. I'm playing an Irish mum on Sunday in a short, says Sharon. Nailing the Dublin accent. There you go. Well, there you go. You want to get involved on uh, on Thursday. And my grandparents are Irish, says Alicia, but they are not smashing. Oh, but I am not smashing the accent. I'm going to say they're not smashing the accent. They're Irish. They must smash it. Um, so that's what's going on this week. What time is it? Flipping out, right? It's nine It's nine minutes to ten. I'm going to do four minutes of Q&A, and I'm going to end on this video that I know a lot of you have seen, but it's a video on what I think actors and creatives need to be focusing on now, right? So let's just be really like honest and open, right? The next few months are going to be hard just as as people, right? We're going to be hitting some difficult months when it comes to COVID. There's going to be more restrictions coming into place in different parts of the country, et cetera, et cetera. But please, like, do not focus on what is being taken away, right? It will, it will never, ever serve you positively, right? Everybody here needs to start focusing on what they have 
being grateful for that and the abundance of opportunities that are still out there within our industry right now. And I mean it literally right now. And we'll still be there when we hit tier three, all those kind of things. If we hit tier three, Greater Manchester is probably going to go tier three tomorrow. I hope it doesn't affect me getting these uh, fake teeth made into proper teeth. Um, but yeah, things are going to get harder. But there's still, TV will still keep moving. St stuff is still being filmed. Stuff started up again literally today. Some of the biggest dramas in TV. Um, I saw Amy, who we've got on next uh, next week, Amy Rain Jackson from Amy Hubbard's office, um, talk. Uh, she put a tweet out today about something. I can't remember what it was. It was a massive show that was going into production today. Stuff is still happening, will continue to happen. Castings will still happen. They're going to be happening via self-tape and you know on Zoom and all that sort of stuff as they're happening right now. But let's stop focusing on the shit and let's stop being triggered by fake news and nonsense. We were fed two massive pieces of fake news last week. One was that bullshit ITV article about Rishi Sunak. Well, that just nonsense interview about Rishi Sunak saying all actors and musicians should retrain. He never said that. Ever, ever, ever. Please go and look at that article now. Watch that interview. He never said that. That article's had its headline changed to the weakest headline in the world because ITV had to retract it because it was bullshit and fake. That journalist was clearly having a bad day. That was a personal vendetta, I felt. And I'm not, I'm not having, I don't have any allegiance to any political party. You will have seen me never post about politics. I'm just not interested in it. Um, I'm all about, look, what can I do? Right. I'm not going to have my my success is never going to be dictated to by who the prime minister is. I'll tell you that. And if you are using who anyone in politics is or where they're at within the political spectrum for why you can't have what you want in your life, you are like you need to make a fundamental like change in your mindset. Doesn't matter who's prime minister for whether you can have success in the acting industry or not. It makes zero difference. Right. You need to look at what you can control, which, yes, technically you could have your one vote to who that is. But if it doesn't go your way. Doesn't mean that you go, oh, forget it, then I tried, forget it. No, you will lose if that's your um, if that's your attitude. So you've got to focus on what it is that you can control. And you can control where you put your focus. And you can put your focus in the morning. You can put on a negative pair of glasses if you want, and you can look for everything that's wrong in the world in this industry. Or you can choose to respond in a much better way, put a nice optimistic pair of glasses on and go, what is still in my control? What is still out there? What do I have? What am I grateful for within this moment right now? What am I going to use that gratitude for? Um, in terms of you know uh, you know motivation, inspiration to go out there and get it, get whatever it is that you want. Um, so I want people to focus on that. I'm going to play this video that I made about this the other day. Um, it would mean the world to me um, if you, because I just want to spread this message far and wide. If you go to my Twitter, I think it's still on there, and just retweet it. Let's just have a quick look if it is, because um, it did resonate with a lot of people. Um, I just wonder if it is on my Twitter still. If, if you go to Ross A. Grant on Twitter after this, don't have to do it now. Um, have I got it on here somewhere? You might have to scroll down a little bit. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, we have to scroll down. Oh, there it is. That's where I look slightly bored at the start. But I was in my kitchen. I was cleaning my kitchen. I was like, right, I'm going to just make this video because I feel I have to. If you could go to my timeline, scroll down like 10 tweets and you'll find it. It says calling all creatives. Just some observations on the echo chamber of negativity on Twitter recently. Um, just spread that message far and wide for me. Um, it would mean the world if you uh, if you could do that. Um, and I'm going to play it for people now who uh, who haven't seen it. So has anyone got any questions? Super quick before I play it. It's 56 minutes past, um, and then um, I'll leave you all to have an amazing rest of your evening. Um, let's see what's going on here. Any more comments? I'm just going to. Yeah, got a few, missed a few. Um, what's going on? I spent the past week actively planting those apple trees. Yeah, there's a quote in this that Ollie Reynolds sent me. Um, he's a market manager for Acts on This, and he sent me a quote by Martin, uh, not, oh, no, it wasn't Martin Luther King. Um, I can't remember who it was by now, <laughs> but it was by um, a professor, a German professor with a similar name. Um, and it was about, yeah, about planting your apple tree. Um, and it's a metaphor for something that I'm not going to give away now. You have to watch it in the video. Um, but it is, it's just about focusing on the good stuff because there's a shit ton of it out there. Um, you've just got to focus on it. You've got to look for it. You won't see it unless you look for it. But there's so, so much positivity in the world that we as creatives should um, make, um, you know, just make, make louder. Nicholas says Martin Luther was the professor. Oh, right, there you go. Not Martin Luther King, just Martin Luther. Couldn't remember if that was it, but yeah, there you go. Martin Luther, German professor. 
Uh, there's a quote at the end of this from him. So I'm going to play it now. It's only about eight minutes long, so I'll take it till about five past ten. Um, and then I will uh, I will see you guys on Thursday night. If you're a member of Acts on This, I'll see you on Thursday for Louise Keeley's webinar. I'm going to film a trailer with Louise tomorrow. I would have filmed it today had I not had to go to the dentist because I punched my own teeth out. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be a great evening. And also, um, what else are we going to say? Yes, if you are currently on the fence about joining Acts on This, remember the price is going to go up on the 1st of November. Um, it won't affect anybody who is a currently a member. You will lock that price in for life. You are immune to price increases as long as you keep your membership active and you don't cancel it. Um, and if you're currently paying on the monthly membership at 24 quid a month uh, and you want to commit to a year, you want to pay a year up front and save, what do we work it out at? About 88 pounds. It's a lot of money, 88 quid. That's like that's, that's over half a headshot session um, for new headshots. If you want to save that 88 quid, just email ross at actonthis.tv. Um, just put in the subject line like yearly upgrade or something like that, membership upgrade, um, and I will send you a link um, so that you can um, cancel your monthly membership, go yearly, and lock it in at that 224 quid price, which is £4.75 a week, I think it works out at. Um, it's basically the price of a brew in it. It's going to cost you, a, in fact, it's not even £4.75 a week. I'm just going to quickly do a little bit of math. 224 divided by 52. It's £4.30 a week. That's a large coconut latte uh, um, at Costa Coffee a week. So if you want to get it for £4.30 a week and you're currently paying monthly, just email ross at actonthis.tv uh, and we'll sort it out. Lee, be dead quick, man. Lee says, need some advice, need help. What do you need help on, Lee Tron? Post it, mate. Quick, quick, quick. Or um, go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash act on this TV. And um, you can post it in the Facebook group. We'll, we'll all, everybody here will jump in and help you, man. We're a big community, um, super supportive. Uh, Nicholas says, thank you for the Monday nights. Love them. BFN, lovely people. That stands for bye for now. That's what I'm going to be saying in a second. Lee, I can't, I'm going to, to, I'm going to have to rush you. I'm going to, I'm going to give you a 20 second countdown, Lee, before I play this video. Your question's got to be there. <laughs> Don't go anywhere yet, guys. Lee needs some help. But he's got 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, come on, Lee. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Everyone's doing the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lee, post it in the Facebook group. Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash act on this TV. This is this video. Let's make positivity louder. Until next time, folks. Bye for now. Actors, creatives, uh, whoever just decides to click on this video, how are you doing? A um, little bit of a different video for me. I am uh, cleaning the kitchen, <laughs> got my laptop here, and I've just been on social media and um, thought, you know what, I've got, I'm going to create a video and just because I just think this might help people's heads in our industry, whether you're an actor, a director, I don't know, a casting director, an agent, writer, producer, just whatever, because I've seen this week two completely polar opposites on social media and, and creatives being triggered and ultimately because they've been triggered just like amplifying massively really amplifying um, negativity within our industry at a time where I don't know if, if you'd agree with me but like a time where it's really essential now to be making positivity louder as opposed to making negativity louder, right? Because the media are going to do that for you anyway. And this all goes back to, remember that ITV interview that, to be honest, was absolute bullshit. It was with Rishi Sunak and it was just an angry journalist, an angry reporter. I don't know what his background is. I'm not sticking up for Rishi Sunak. I have no, uh, uh, you know, allegiance to any political party. Like, genuinely, I just stay out of it. I think it's all bollocks. Um, but this journalist was just after some kind of blood. He just sounded proper pissed off did this interview with Rishi and then decided he was going to put the headline out. Um, Rishi Sunak says all actors and musicians should retrain, right? And then I watched the interview and I went, he hasn't said that at all. Those words never came out of his mouth. And what I saw was people reading the headline and I get it, right? Most of us don't have time to read things or watch things if we're, if we're leading busy lives. There's a lot of headline readers suddenly jump on the back of that, retweet stuff. Fuck you, Rishi. You're this, you're that, the other. And then what happens is 10,000 creatives all create this massive echo chamber of negativity, which I don't know about you, but for me, 
Um, it just drains the shit out of you. You don't feel motivated to continue. You don't feel creative at all. You feel like it's just draining the life out of you. Oh my God, is there any hope in this community, in this industry moving forward? Um, and uh, I just think it ends up doing more damage um, than actually the article that was shit anyway, was fake news, um, that it would have done had just no one paid any attention to it. And if you don't know, just a little update. I just looked at actually the, the article now. And the headline's been changed on it completely. It's such a weak headline now. But this is, I mean, look at this. This is, this is because it was fake. It says, COVID, Rishi Sunak says people in all walks of life are having to adapt for employment. Well, is that just, is that just like what we just all have to do any, anyway, like in, in, in peacetime, even when COVID's not around? So I thought that was bullshit. And I'd like to just, a little bit of tough love, if people in the creative industry are going to be angry about something right now, at least research what it is that you're angry about and make sure it's true. And then there was that Fatima picture that was going around. And again, right, I'm not sticking up for it at all. I think it was a, uh, you know, a, it was just not, a, it just wasn't a good campaign, was it? It wasn't a great campaign. But really, that campaign was run by, I think it was a company called Q, QA something. They're, they're um, a tech, uh, like, skill organization. They teach people certification in IT. And obviously, it was just a poorly timed, um, a really poorly timed uh, ad campaign to get people into cybersecurity and getting them certified. Um, and it wasn't just Fatima, right? It wasn't an attack, a direct attack. It was in bad taste in general, I think. But it wasn't an attack at the arts at all. If you have a look, I've got some other pictures here. Here's a picture of Dan. Dan's next job could be in cyber. Now, Dan looks like he works in a supermarket, right? So they were obviously putting supermarket people in there. Um, who else have we got on here? Justin. Um, Justin looks like he's a barista. Justin's next job could be in cyber. So he's not in the creative industry. Um, Sophia looks like she works in Levi's or summer. I don't know, works in retail. So she's been targeted. Um, we've got Omar, who looks like he's a hairdresser. Um, so this campaign, again, I know it felt like a personal attack, on artists, but actually if someone, if you'd have just done like a few minutes research on it, you'd have realised that actually, you know what, they're just targeting loads of people, it's probably a really ill thought out campaign, it's not that great, but you don't have to create this massive echo chamber of negativity that actually probably ends up doing more harm than good, okay, it, it just creates more fear and creatives, more actors, I was getting more emails from actors going, oh my god, should I just give up, you know, like, this is just too much, I can't handle it, it just creates anxiety, depression within people, and um, and I think that, like, now, I just want to, like, put a pledge out, like, put a bit of a plea out to go, look, can we, and I, I agree to this, like, just make positivity louder moving forward, if you are you know, an agent and your actors are auditioning, if you're a casting director and you're putting castings out, if you're an actor and you're booking self-tapes or jobs, which I've seen so many people do this week still, let's start tweeting about that. We know we're served 17 pieces of negative news for every one piece of positive news statistically. So can we as a community, as creatives, can we fill those other 16 spaces moving forward with good news? Because there's a shit ton of it out there if you just look for it. I know this week alone, I'm based in Manchester. I know Home Theatre here in Manchester. Beautiful theatre was given £350,000 um, this week. I know 53.2, a great theatre organisation um, run by uh, Simon Naylor and uh, Alex Maxwell. They were giving money this week. Stigid Wayne is an actor in the Acts on This Community that I run. He was given a job in Brassic for Sky this week. I've seen agents posting about people landing jobs in serial drama. Lewis Arnold, great director. I saw him um, last week, I think, tweeting about a read-through for a new show that he's directing, um, big TV show. Um, Nicola Schindler and Reproduction Company commissioned a show this week. I think Sheridan Smith's in that. Like, There's loads of good news peppered amongst a mass, though, a much bigger volume of shit that people in our, in our industry are just tweeting and tweeting and tweeting and sharing on Facebook and Instagram and all this sort of stuff. So... Um, just I want people to just focus on what's good in the world because there's a load of it out there if you look for it and um, and just make positivity louder, basically. I know personally, um, I found out when I was 17, I've got a dodgy eye condition, I'm losing my eyesight and um, I know on the days where I focus on the eyesight I lost yesterday as opposed to focusing on the eyesight I still have are shit days for me. 
right? I try not to have many of them at all. I'm very, very good now at, at completely changing my mindset when that happens. But I think if we focus as creatives on what we lost yesterday as opposed to what we still have and the ability we still have to put stuff out there, create stuff, you know, use the internet, adapt, um, you know, and still be creative. It's not adapt and retrain and go into something else. You don't need to do that. But let's just focus on what we do have, okay? And there was a great quote a friend sent me. I want to read it you. Um, shout out to Ollie who sent me uh, this. It's a quote by Martin Luther. Not Martin Luther King. I think this was Martin Luther, a professor, a German professor. He said, listen, even if I knew that tomorrow the world would go to pieces, I would still plant my apple tree. I don't want everyone watching this video to still plant your apple trees as creative. Still create, okay? Even if you think the whole world is going to shit, don't postpone your happiness. I think that's really what it means. Don't think, oh, when this is all over, I'll be happy. Sow those seeds today. Write that thing. Film that thing. You know, reach out to that person. Shoot that self-tape. I don't know. Start casting, you know, or planning to cast that project that you want to make on your own um, or whatever it is. Because I, I promise you, I'm really optimistic. I think, I hope, you know, within six months' time, maybe six months' time down the line, um, if you plant the apple tree today, you're going to start seeing it grow. And maybe it'll start bearing some fruit and... I don't know if it doesn't, or if it, no, you know what, even if it does and the whole world goes to shit, we'll take the apples off it, we'll make some cider and we'll all get pissed. Um, but let's make, hashtag, let's uh, make positivity louder and let's fill that gap, that void of 16 pieces of negative news. Uh, let's fill that with positivity. So um, I'm going to get back to cleaning the kitchen. Um, if you have got this far uh, and you've listened to me waffle, thank you so much. Um, retweet this or share it, it'd mean the world. But yeah, get out there, let's make positivity louder.